Hello, welcome to Game Over Gurkaman. I'm Gurkaman, and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing this in post, and the reason for this is, originally I actually sat down with my girlfriend Jessica, we recorded this episode together along with the next two episodes, which came out fine, but for whatever reason, the audio file for this episode came out completely empty, so it did record, it just didn't actually record us saying anything. No idea why, that's just how things went which is a little frustrating for obvious reasons. So uh, yeah, I'm doing this in post. Now, uh, doing these things in post isn't entirely alien to me since the original Game Over Girl Command series was entirely done in post. And this was actually something I was thinking of doing for uh, my next game uh, instead of doing it live, uh, just so I can cut down the length of the episodes, you know, trim the, trim the deaths and things, which I did do with this episode. Originally, this episode was 40 minutes long and I've got it down to like 27. So, you know, obviously being able to edit helps. And uh, it means I can talk without it affecting the way I'm playing. I'm still going to point things out. But uh, this will, I don't know, this will be a little bit more um, personal, I guess. Because I can think more while I'm talking. Because I can just concentrate on what I'm saying and what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, this part of the game here. So I'm going to introduce some, to some new enemies. The... Uh, I guess they're like monks, I guess you'd say. This is actually a pretty rough introduction too, like it's very easy to, to uh, die here or to have Ashley die here. It's very, very brutal. Once again, the whole game's a lot like that, I suppose, where it's very easy to uh, die when you're introduced to new enemies. They definitely do a good job of making everyone feel threatening. Uh, you may also hear some crows and stuff outside, that's because spring is here. It's the second day of spring and the, the crows are in full cacophony. Is that the word? I don't, I don't know. But, uh, actually I have quite, I have, I think, two figurines of these guys locked away in a box somewhere. And these monks, I got the guy with the, with the goat head skull and the one with the golden, golden skull, which... Actually, I don't know if you see them as well in the game. They're basically just one of these regular guys, but with, a like a golden human skull, which... Stops you from getting headshots. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the other reason I was thinking of starting to do this in post, and uh, uh, please leave a comment in the below if you like, in below if you like this idea, or if you don't like this idea, it was uh, originally, over on the Tattletale Gaming channel, I was doing, like, little thoughts on news and things like that. And uh, some people seemed, seemed to like that. Some videos were obviously longer than others and things, but there was always, like, a little bit of a topic. And uh, when I'm recording, because I'm sitting down to record these all in one sitting so I can do batch renderings at work at the moment, that's not really I ideal for uh, topical conversations. And I was kind of thinking of maybe bringing some elements of that back, like just thoughts on things that are happening in the gaming industry or movie industry or hell, even the animation industry at this point. There's one of those gold skull guys I was talking about. And, uh... Yeah, is that something you'd be interested in? Because uh, actually... I had a little topic for this this episode that I came up with after a, a trailer was released yesterday um, that I thought I'd drop some drop some thoughts on while we're watching Leon run around here and uh, do stuff. So I'm going to try to juggle talking about news, gaming news, and and what's happening in the actual video. So the two things are uh, related. But uh, yesterday. A uh, trailer dropped for God of War 3 Remastered for the PlayStation 4. I've gone on the record in the past that I believe that a lot of these remasters are actually a uh, a, a good thing for the industry. Uh, like, I, like I've been talking about in previous episodes, I've been playing through Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light Redux. I've actually finished them both now, they're both fantastic games. And, uh... I believe Last Light was the only one that was actually released on consoles. 2033 was originally a PC exclusive, I believe. And so through this re-release for the Xbox One and PS4, I got to experience these games that I had previously not had the opportunity to experience because I don't have a gaming PC. And I wasn't going to pick up Metro Last Light when I hadn't played Metro 2033 because that just wouldn't make sense. And now that I've played through it, it it's, it's crazy to me that that's what they did because of... Uh, Metro Last Light makes absolutely no sense unless you've played through Metro 2033. So I do believe that uh, remakes and reduxes and things like that can be a good thing. Uh, the Last of Us is another example of what I think is a good 
idea for a remake. Um, uh, the Xbox 360 won the last generation, so for Sony to put one of its biggest games of the of the last few years onto the PS4, now that the PS4 is outselling the Xbox One, that makes sense because that's exposing the game to a new audience who might not have got to play it in the past. The same goes for Journey, which I know they're re-releasing digitally, and uh, a number of other games. I'm sure Uncharted will get the treatment as well, and I'm sure they'll be smart about it, or at least I hope they're smart about it, and they will release Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 in like a, a bundle. I think bundles are definitely the best way to go about these reduxes or re or remasters. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually very okay with the idea of remakes and remasters. I've been able to play through old games at 1080p, 60 frames a second is uh, always a good thing. Um, but there have recently been a, a crop up of uh, a few of these which I'm not overly keen on. Uh, for example, the Borderlands Handsome Jack collection. I, I enjoy Borderlands quite a lot. Uh, I'm a fan of the series. But this new release for the for the current gen consoles, because I refuse to call them next gen, because you know we're two years into the cycle and there's nothing next gen about them in the first place. But uh, this bundle comes with the Handsome Jack collection, comes with Borderlands 2 with all its DLC and Borderlands the pre sequel, and I'm not entirely sure if it comes with it's going to come with free downloads for all the DLC for the pre sequel. I'm starting to get a feeling that it doesn't. But it doesn't include the original Borderlands. These games are all made in Unreal Engine 3. They're all using the exact same engine and source code, so theoretically it should be an absolute cakewalk to have all three of these games together in the one bundle. But for some reason, the original Borderlands isn't included in there. And they haven't given a, given a specific reason as to why. They've said that they're open to fans like wanting it, and if the demand's there, they might do it. But, I don't understand why it just isn't there in the first place. Maybe they just don't think that the original has a big enough following or that people are only interested in the second and pre-sequel ones. I don't know. But that to me, I get the feeling that if they do release Borderlands, it'll be its own, it'll be like a re-release that you'll also have to pay for. And that's really not something I'm really cool about. If you buy the Handsome Jack collection, you should get the original Borderlands as well, even though it doesn't contain Handsome Jack in the actual game. I'd just like to point out, this is the first time you meet one of these enemies, uh, which replace the old Last Plagueis with the blades. I think that the ones with the blades that come out of the villages are actually the most dangerous. These guys are a lot easier and slower. To, uh, they're, they're bigger and easier to hit, so they're not, not so bad. But uh, yeah, that was just a little thing. And that was like a little puzzle that you swap two swords around. This game's got some heavy puzzles, I can tell you. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the trailer that got me onto this topic was they released a trailer yesterday for God of War 3 Remastered. Now, those of you who have a PlayStation 3 might remember that a couple of years ago they released the God of War collection, which contained God of War 1 and God of War 2 in 1080p at 60 frames a second on the PS3. Then there was a second release, which also had uh, Chains of Olympus and... The other one for the PSP, redone for the PS3, so that's another disc that had those two games on it. And there was also God of War Ascension. And then God of War 3 was, of course, the big one for for the actual system. That was their system seller. Now, I'm going to go on the record and say that I'm actually a fan of God of War 3. The opening of uh, God of War 3, when you're riding on the back of the... I forget which Titan it is, like Gaia or whatever, while you're fighting Poseidon. I think that was one of the most memorable sequences of any game in Why are you it makes me feel bad. Uh, the last generation Let's just leave it at that. so I like the game but the idea that they're just releasing God of War 3 on its own for the PlayStation 4 I I don't understand why that is and assumingly it's so that they can also re-release God of War Ascension down the line also at a higher price and then no doubt they'll also re-release the God of War 1 and 2 games for a higher price. And uh, this is where remakes become an issue for me. There's no reason other than because I don't want to put the money into... Obviously it, it costs money to get these games ported over to the new consoles. But uh... Putting God of War 3, like, if why would you want that to be someone's first God of War? If someone's picking up a PlayStation 4 now, they might not have had a PS2 because they were a kid when the PS2 was a thing. 
or even they didn't have it on the oh they didn't play through the original two on their re-release on PlayStation Three because they were too young. Because there are kids who are buying these the, the PlayStation Four and Xbox One now who were like six or seven when these games came out on the last generation of consoles. If you were to like God of War Three is your first, you, you're coming into the end of the story basically. And that just seems like a really weird place to start people off in a series on a, on a new console. Um, yeah, it's just a, a mentality that's something I'm seeing increasingly that I don't quite understand. And uh, something that kind of bothers me. Something that doesn't bother me is uh, this is an area that you don't have to do if you're playing it on easy. Resident Evil 4 does a thing kind of like Goldeneye. If you remember Goldeneye, when you were playing on higher difficulties, you got extra, like, mission goals, I guess you'd call them. Extra objectives. That's a better way of putting it. And Resident Evil 4 does that as well. It unlocks, uh, in the castle part at least, it's the only area I remember this being a thing. I don't remember this being in, this being a thing in the earlier parts of the game or in the later parts of the game. It's purely in this middle section. That playing it on normal or hard actually adds in extra areas for you to, uh, explore and things that aren't there on easy. So I, th I thought that was interesting and uh, worth pointing out. There's a uh, one other area as well which which also does that, but that's in the next episode. And I think I forgot to bring it up, but in the next episode there's an area where there's a lot, uh, like a maze, and uh, that is also only when you're playing on normal. But uh, yeah, back to the remix thing. Yeah, starting with uh, God of War 3, it seems like a really strange and weird and odd decision. Especially when you've already basically ported 1 and 2 to the PlayStation 3. Anyway, so I think the reason this is happening is the PlayStation 3 architecture is obviously pretty pretty alien. There were a lot of complaints when the system was young about how difficult it was to develop for because of the cell architecture. So I think it's purely just because porting these games to the PlayStation 4 from that original source code must be difficult, but it just seems like Especially since the trailer that was released like brought up like, hey, we've got seven games and this is a long legacy and a long history and this series is amazing and really important to gaming. Why aren't they all in one set? If you want, if I've got a PlayStation 4 and I want to get into the God of War series, which I've never gotten into before, I would want to start with one and work my way through. Why isn't it the collection, which was released on the PlayStation 3, there was an entire God of War collection which had like all seven games in it. Why isn't that a thing? I, was starting to wonder when I just, uh, it's a weird thing that I don't understand. Who are you? Me llamo Ramon Salazar, the eighth Castellan. I love this character. I think he's amazing. He's my favorite character in Resident Evil 4. Power from the great Lord Sadler. I've been expecting you. He hams it up so beautifully. No thanks, bro. No thanks, bro. Just. Classic. If you care for your own well-being, I suggest you surrender yourself and simply become our hostage. Or Mr. Scott, you can give us the girl because you're not worth a penny, I'm afraid. You can die. I'm never turning into one of them. Never. Got that right. We'll find a cure. Anyway. Uh, enough about that. I'll, I'll, I'll briefly finish up on that and we're going to talk about the, this this part of Resident Evil 4 for a bit. Um, in terms of remasters, I would like to say I'd like to see the, the Mass Effect trilogy re-released. I would like to play through those on on the uh, in, in 1080p 60 frames a second, that'd be nice. Uh, it's all Unreal, Unreal Engine 3, so it should the system should handle it pretty easily. But uh, there's not that many games left I'd like to see remastered, to be completely honest. I'd like to see some of the GameCube games ported to the Wii U, that'd be nice. Wind Waker was a nice little uh, diversion, but it'd be nice if we got, you know, Twilight Princess and... What else? Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong Country Returns, and Metroid Prime Trilogy, of course, re-released in HD. There's uh, quite a few older games I would like to see Nintendo re-release, but on the other consoles, there's not that many. I know Dark Souls 2 is getting a release, I'm not sure why. Once again, they could have ported Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, and Dark Souls 2 all in like one big soul set, like that would have been amazing. Uh, all we're getting is uh, Dark Souls 2, unfortunately. 
So yeah, Remos is a definitely a funny thing. And that's really all I have to say on it. I just like, does anyone else does anyone else care about care about this stuff? Does anyone else, like have like mixed feelings about about remasters and re-releases? Maybe it is just me. I I don't know. Anyway, this part of the game. This is where the game takes a massive tonal shift. Uh, I would say that the first two chapters of Resident Evil 4 are very much uh, survival horror. Or focused on survival horror. Not that that guy there with his eyes stitched shut isn't horrifying, but there's a big tonal shift when you get to this castle, mainly because uh, once Salazar gets introduced, he is a just a hilarious character that is impossible to take seriously. He's like the campy villain out of the 80s. Um, this character here, he's uh, quite easy to take out on New Game Plus, obviously with an upgraded arsenal, especially using the rifle, but it, he's an interesting boss. So uh, his eyes are sewn shut, so he can't see anything, obviously. And your goal is to just lure him around and try to hopefully either get behind him, or if you're clever, you can get him to stick his claws into the wall. And he will, uh, like that. And that opens him up to an attack from behind. But of course, you got to be quick, and Leon is anything but quick. But still, you know, it, it adds, a, adds a lot of tension. Something that is funny, like, you would think that when you, uh... I keep thinking that if I shoot the wall, he's going to hear the, the bullet hit the wall, and that's what he's going to go after. But of course, he goes after the... The sound of the gunfire. Unless you hit the bell. So there's... Obviously, the bell's a little bit higher priority. In terms of audio for that guy. But uh, his swinging certainly makes it hard to aim for his back. I'll give him that. I do like the way this game introduces this guy as a sort of boss, and uh, in an upcoming episode, you'll find they almost—I wouldn't say they become regular enemies, but they certainly—they uh, certainly push it a lot further forward, and you have a lot more to keep tabs on. I've just realized how difficult it is to talk on your own for 30 minutes over the top of pre-existing footage. This is not easy. My mouth is getting very, very dry. What's that all about? I don't know. I also don't understand these flaming horse heads. There's some weird things in this castle that don't necessarily make make a lick of sense. But it's an interesting environment, so... It's definitely... A, this, is a, this chapter of the game is definitely the longest in the the entirety of the game. I think like the first two chapters are all set in the village and then I think it's the middle three chapters are all in this one big castle. It's uh, quite a massive chunk of the adventure and then the last two take place on somewhere else. But uh, when Re when people think Resident Evil 4 they always think about the Chainsaw Man and the, the village and it's funny that it's really not that big a part of the game. And mechanically that part of the game is very different to to this section of the game, I mean, in that in that section you have a lot of backtracking, which I, I mentioned in some of my previous LPs. In fact, you go back to the main village like three times. There's a few areas that you cross like three times at different times a day. Um, there's a heavier emphasis on, on a heavy emphasis on one hit kills with a chainsaw man and chainsaw lady. So that's an interesting thing. Well, I think it's interesting anyway. And uh, the whole, really the feel is completely different, and I, that's my favorite thing about Resident Evil 4, is it always feels fresh. Just as you're getting used to the game behaving in a certain way, it, it puts you through a complete U-turn, and completely changes uh, what you're doing. So it's not just a matter of like changing the enemies in the environment, but the actual style of gameplay, while you're still essentially doing the exact same thing, completely changes just because of the elements of the design. So uh, this castle has a much heavier emphasis on puzzles than the first two chapters of the game did. While they did have puzzles, they were a lot of them were actually optional; they weren't mandatory. Whereas this, uh, the puzzles in this part are much more. Yeah, well, they're all they're all mandatory basically, except for a couple to get get some good old money. Uh, this part was actually edited. I died on this part twice. Even in New Game Plus, this section of the game here is uh, absolutely relentless. And I honestly think it could be the most stressful part of the game for me. Playing through this game on any difficulty, uh, outside of easy of course, through this part is an absolute... I wouldn't call it a chore, because a chore means that it's unpleasant. But it's very unforgiving. It takes no prisoners. 
and I really like how unforgiving it is in a lot of ways. But uh, it, it is kind of annoying having to replay it over and over again, because there's a few like little areas where you could put a put a checkpoint so you didn't have to play through the entire section again, and I'll, I'll point those out as, as I go through here. Checkpoints are an interesting thing. Uh, some people think that they're getting too frequent now in games, um, and I can I can agree with that. I think checkpoints are getting too frequent in some games, a little bit too handholdy. But at other times, it also feels like games. If you are dying a lot in a certain place and replaying the same thing over and over again, the game is wasting your time. So there's a delicate balance, I think, between the uh, there's a baby crying next door. Isn't that lovely? Don't you love that? Once I move into our new apartment, this won't uh, be an issue anymore, hopefully. Although you'll be able to hear my girlfriend playing WoW in the background, generally, and things like that when I'm recording there. But anyway, um, checkpoints, yeah. So, yeah, it's got to be a delicate balance, but I think, like, my, my general rule is I like games that after every cutscene, there's a checkpoint. I feel, I feel like cutscenes, unless it's like a little camera pan to, like, show you, like, a little puzzle or something like that, in the middle of something, like, that's a dumb place for a checkpoint, but I feel like cutscenes generally bookend L sections of gameplay. Or at least, you know, they do in, they do in a lot of games. And, um, this game doesn't necessarily do that. It's chapter, the, the cut, the checkpoints are kind of sporadically placed. Whenever you go through a door, there's a checkpoint, and that's fine. That makes sense in a lot of areas of this game, because uh, not a door like this, but one of the ones that loads. But, um, there's no, like, in-room checks, uh, but something like this, like, this puzzle, like, activates this thing where the lift comes up. That I would have as a checkpoint. You've accomplished that. You've fought through that and you've survived. Congratulations. Give yourself a little pat on the back. Here are some more enemies. But the game doesn't do that. If you die in this section here, you have to replay, uh, that section where you have to kill those, like, 20 guys all over again. And that's what happened to me twice, playing through this. And that just feels like time wasting at that point. And that's why this video was originally 40 minutes long, because I spent like, you know, 20 minutes playing through this section over and over again. And so uh, I think after you solve that little puzzle there, that should be a checkpoint. Um, and then once again, you've, you've got more of these guys, which is, that's, that's fine. Of course, the issue with checkpoint with checkpoints like that is if you use up all your ammunition or something like that, it's very easy to get yourself cornered. So. I know that they scattered am ammunition around the room to try to alleviate that problem of running out of ammo here. And if you're playing smart, you shouldn't have that happen and you're just gonna make life hard for yourself. But that's the sort of thing they do have to take into account when you're designing something like this. Oh, look at me, now I'm doing this in post. I'm getting all like design philosophy and stuff like that. Um, actually, something my girlfriend pointed out too that I hadn't really thought about. Just pointed out that it always asks me if I want to pick up ammunition. And that's, I never really thought about it. But in a game where you need that ammunition constantly, there's no reason not to pick it up, so... Good on her for pointing out how annoying it is that you have to constantly get asked if you want to pick something up, when, yeah, I kind of automatically do want that. I guess I'm so used to the game that I, I was just processing that, like, automatically, I don't really think about it. But um, I definitely think it was a good point. Uh, so once you come up here... There, there is another checkpoint, actually. This this part does have what I'm talking about. There's this little cutscene here where she points out what you need to do. That is a checkpoint. So I don't understand why that's a checkpoint there, but the one down underneath is not a checkpoint. So there's some inconsistencies where the checkpoints uh, are placed in this game in, in that sort of regard. I also died, I think, like twice here, but that's because my rifle was too powerful. And while Ashley was getting carried away, I... um. The bullet went through the guy that was carrying her and killed her as well, so that was kind of frustrating. But, uh... But, uh, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh. So that, that doesn't, well, I mean, that should really probably be the cutscene there, actually, because having to get her up there every time is kind of annoying, too. What are your thoughts on cutscenes? That's another thing that I'm worth that I'm interested in. Let me know your thoughts on that below. This is the sort of thing I'd like to do, like get a conversation happening about this sort of stuff, and then in the following episodes I can sort of like talk back and we can get like a conversation going through video. Of course, not in Resident Evil 4 because I'm still gonna, I'm gonna try to let's play the rest of this game. I'm not gonna suddenly start doing 
pre uh, talking over recordings like I am in this video. This is purely because the recording didn't work. But uh, for my next game, which I should say I said in one of my other videos I was wanting to do Elder Scrolls Oblivion. That is still the case. And uh, I'm going to try to not to talk over cutscenes from uh, in, in if I start doing this as well. I'm going to try to leave them as they are. But uh, I wanted to do Elder Scrolls Oblivion, but my copy still has not arrived in the mail. And the tracking code on USPS and on Canada Post is, is not pulling up anything. It was working. Last I saw it, it was like stuck in Delaware of all places for, for God knows why. And uh, eBay's estimated time was like two days ago and it still hasn't arrived. So that's a little bit annoying. So I'm thinking about what I should do instead of Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which would be long. Uh, I was thinking maybe Mass Effect or Donkey Kong Country Returns, the first one. Um, I might get into Tropical Freeze later on because I did do the other Donkey Kong Country games. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, something something like that. Something that isn't a shooter, basically. I want to have something... Well, I mean, Mass Effect is still an over-the-shoulder shooter like this, but it's got a lot more happening in the story, and that's a little bit interesting. Uh, perhaps Cameo. Um, any of those, like, if you have a preference that you want me to play through, because I'm open to... Oh, these are all games I'm wanting to play through at the moment for a replay through for fun. Let me know in the comments below, and... Um, I will do that. Also, for Donkey Kong Country Returns, because the levels are quite a bit longer than the original ones, each episode will be a single stage. So that series would be quite long, but the episodes will be relatively short. So it'd be good for like little little topics and little news pieces, I guess. But um, it's always going to change like game to game, I suppose. But uh, let me know what you're interested in or what you'd like to see in the in the uh, comments below, and that is what I'll play. So yeah, your options are, unless Elder, if Elder Scrolls Oblivion arrives before I start recording, then I will do that. But if it doesn't, uh, let me know if you want to watch Mass Effect, Donkey Kong Country Returns, or Cameo, Elements of Power. Because I have things to say about all of them. And um, I'm sort of familiar with all of them. Well, I'm very familiar with Mass Effect and Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah, Cameo I only played through once quite a few years ago, but I'm kind of wanting to go back to it now. I find looking at Rare's old stuff interesting. So uh, yeah, if you'd let me know in the comments below which one of those three you'd like me to play through first, that'd, that'd be great. And then I'll play through one of the other ones after Resident Evil 4 is done. So, uh, You're right. yes. Why did Ashley run into a dead end to get away from me? It makes no sense. Ashley. I don't know. That was a silly thing to do. Anyway, that was today's episode. Thanks for joining me. Sorry it was a little bit different to what you're probably used to. Um, but if you like this format and the way I presented this video, let me know and I will look into incorporate and I will look at doing my uh, future LPs or I guess that will be future Game Over, Go Game Over Go commands in this style. So uh, thanks again for your time. I will be back to our regularly scheduled programming on Wednesday and uh, Jessica will be joining me and we'll be talking some video game Nintendo stuff actually. So join us for that. Thanks to you and have a good one.